So hello and welcome. This is a special update. I'm Frederick Dunn. This is February the 4th of 2024. So what do we have? Sunshine in the bee yard and temperatures about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. But then of course you add the sun and what do we get? Lots of activity. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to update the ivory bee hive. This hive we set up about six months ago and a uh, little history on it. We stocked it with a swarm and they went straight to work in this beehive, 15 frames inside and they drew out the comb on every frame and capped the honey. Now, of course, they're cleaning out their dead. This is pretty typical this time of year to find a bunch of dead bees. This is on the porch, of course, otherwise they'd be down in the grass. The entrance activity for some new beekeepers could be somewhat alarming. You might think they're being robbed, but I'd like to suggest that you take a longer look and see what the activity really is. So we're going to pull up the top here. This is an observation hive, 180 degree view over the top throughout the length. And we can see they're still loaded with lots of capped honey resources. Now they're also obviously brooding up. That's why we have so many bees inside this hive. A lot of people had concerns about whether or not this would manage in the northeastern United States where we get snow and cold winters. And I think that uh, safe to say they are doing very well here. We do see quite a bit of condensation in some areas of the hive where the cluster is not occupying it. Also, this is the leading end here so they have clear plates on the front and the back and notice the vent holes there are plugged with propolis also you can see that they've attached their honeycomb throughout and where it's dry there that's where the cluster is condensation is here at the far end where we have lots of capped honey but the bees haven't arrived yet so that lets us know they have lots of resources in fact they haven't even used up a third of the honey that they stored which is pretty remarkable considering that this was just a swarm. So everything in this hive they had to build on their own. There are no frame feeders. There's no place to put a hive top feeder. So these bees have foraged for their resources. And of course we did not take off any honey from this hive. Although we're going to probably attempt that in the spring of 2024, which is this year. The reason we're going to have to do that is they simply have too much honey in there and this will be a trigger when spring comes for them to swarm out. I'd like to reduce that and uh, keep as many of these bees as we can. Based on this February buildup though, it looks like they're really going to be heavily populated early in the year. And we don't really know their genetics because remember it's a swarm, although it's very likely that this is my own stock from another hive in the same apiary. Now the ivory bee hive is insulated front, back, top, and bottom, even though it has transparent plexiglass in it. Now see that dead bee being dragged out there? That's key if you're wondering if these bees are robbing or if they're residents. Resident bees clean out the dead bees clean out the detritus on the bottom of the hive and you'll see them doing housekeeping like that if they were robbers they would be doing no housekeeping now one of the things that we notice that's not going into this hive they're not finding pollen anywhere some of you may be thinking well if we want them to brood up now this is the first week of february we could offer them a pollen substitute or a pollen patty or something like that I personally prefer not to do that because I want the pollen that they bring in, first of all, to come from the environment. And second, I'd like that to be what really triggers their main brood production. This colony is already, in my opinion, pretty active population wise, and I'm hoping that uh, they don't grow too fast too soon. So the fact that they have plenty of carbohydrates, lots of honey, and those resources look inexhaustible right now based on the number of bees, the space inside the hive, and the capped honey available. I think they're good to go. So I'm just going to wait until they find their own pollen resources in the environment, which are probably going to start up next month. So this nice warm up gives us a chance to really look at them. I like to do slow motion just because, first of all, it's interesting to listen to. 
and it lets us see their behavior in ways that we otherwise can't when it's full speed. So if you'd like to jump ahead, of course, it is marked and you can see where the normal activity resumes. But for those who just want to watch and listen, I'm going to let you do that now and then I'll resume my commentary at the end of the slow-mo sequence. And that's the end of the slow motion sequence, so we're back to normal here. People do wonder about the other hives in the apiary. For example, the Layens hives, I can tell you ahead of time, they are very robust. They're doing extremely well. Apame hives are insulated. They're doing extremely well. All the landing board activity is very good and promising for spring. The observation hives were all flying as well. So I think we're in pretty good shape, and as we go further into this week, we're going to get temps up into the 50s, and that's when we're going to see lots more of their foraging activity continue. You'll also expect to see some orientation flights in front of your hives. Remember, for some of these bees, this is their first time outside. You can expect to see them doing figure eights in front of the hive, 
corkscrewing up into the air, and then of course flying off to forage if they're the older bees in the hive. So landing board bits and pieces like this are normal. If they were being rubbed, we'd see a bunch of sticky spots too from honey on their feet. And here it looks pretty dry, like they may have cut out some pollen, for example. And that also could have just fallen on the bottom of the hive. There's a weep hole here in the center that prevents water from building up there and pooling. And there is a dying worker bee sitting right in that little tiny hole. And she later gets removed. So there again, the difference between robbing and uh, normal maintenance behavior. Watch for them dragging out their dead, cleaning up the hive, and no fighting on the landing board. Also, we can see that this bee in the center is trying to fan. Remember, there is some condensation inside the hive. They like to vent that out. Here's a nice close-up to show you again the bee that's in the way there. And eventually they do get her out. Uh, some of you may wonder, why do the bees die this time of year? Well, bees come to the normal end of their life as well. So it is normal for them to cycle out. That's normal attrition. And if it's warm enough, they fly off and die. If it's too cold and they can't get out of the hive, they die inside and they're on the bottom. And then, of course, the undertaker bees will drag them out and fly them away from the hive. So this is normal maintenance. And this bee, of course, is dead. The tongue is extended. The proboscis is visible. And uh, it's normal. So I just wanted to give you an update. I have received several questions about the ivory beehives and whether or not they can handle winter. And I think it's pretty clear by this demonstration that at least this ivory beehive is doing just fine. So I want to thank you for watching. Keep those landing boards clear and get out there and watch your bees while the sun is shining. Thanks again. I wish you all the best with your bees.